The look and style of a category or widget is specified by its theme. When you first create a category or widget, you decide which theme you want to use. You can also change the selected theme at any time by editing either the category or widget and clicking on the Settings tab. To view all the themes being used on your blog, let's go to the Themes page. You can edit a particular theme by clicking the Edit link next to its name. You can also create a new theme by clicking the Create New Theme button. Also notice that each theme is specific to either a coupon store or a product store. Let's get started by editing an existing theme being used by our categories. This is the theme editor. The theme editor has a toolbar at the top and example products at the bottom. The example products are there to show you how a category or widget will look when the theme is applied. Let's go over the capabilities of each of the toolbar items from left to right. First up is the layout selector. The layout selector determines how the components of an advertisement are organized. You can change the layout of a theme simply by clicking on one of the advertisements and then selecting the new layout. As I change the layout, you can see the example products update to show you what it looks like. Next to the layout selector is the image width dropdown. This dropdown allows you to specify how wide the product images are. Again, to change the image width, simply select the advertisement and then change the dropdown value. The example products reflect that change. Next to the layout selector is the field selector. Each advertisement has multiple fields, for example, the name, the description, the price. The theme editor lets you specify the style of each field separately. To select the field that you're customizing, you can either click on that field, or you can just select it in the field dropdown. To the right of the selected field dropdown is the text editing buttons. If you have ever used a word processor or email program before, many of these buttons should be familiar to you. There are drop-downs to select font style and size, to make text bold, italic, or underlined, to set the text alignment, or to set the font color and background color. Again, to make any changes to the style of a piece of text, just click the field you want to customize and then use the toolbar to make the changes. Here, I will update the name fields, font size, and color. The final icon in the text editing section of the toolbar is the eye icon. The eye icon is used to toggle a field's visibility. To hide a field, simply click on it and then click the eye icon. To make it visible again, select the field in the selected field dropdown and then click the eye icon again. To the right of the text editing buttons is the max field length. The max field length controls how many characters to show in a specific field. For instance, if I wanted to only show the first 100 characters of a product's description, I can just click on the description field and then enter in the number 100. You can see the descriptions have now been chopped off after 100 characters. Finally, all the way on the end of the toolbar is the Call to Action Editor. The Call to Action is the link or button that prompts the user to click. With Cellfire, you can use either a link or a button as your call to action. This drop-down specifies the style of the call to action. With the theme editor, you can also specify some prompt and prefix text of the advertisement. For instance, we can change what text is displayed in the button. To give the button your own text, just double-click on it and an editor will appear. You can also specify what text should come before the merchant name. Again, to provide that text, just double-click and enter it into the text box. All right, now let's flip over to the Page tab of the Toolbar. This tab shows you how to specify additional information about how your product advertisement should be laid out. The first drop-down is the Border drop-down. This specifies what type of border lines are drawn around your products or coupons. A grid will draw lines around all sides. A row will just draw lines at the bottom, and none will draw no lines at all. In order to see the border lines, you need to actually view a store they do not appear in the editor. Next to the border drop-down is the page width. This text box allows you to change how much space the store will take when it is embedded into your site. You can specify either a percentage amount or a pixel amount. The background selector lets you change the background color for the entire store. 
This can be helpful if your website has a black background and you want your widgets to have white text. Next to the background color is the paging dropdown. The paging dropdown determines where the links to flip through pages of the store should appear. You can select to have them appear at the top of the store, the bottom of the store, or in both locations. Finally, we have the row and column text boxes. Here you can specify how many rows of products or coupons appear on a single page of your category or widget. You can also specify how many columns per row. It is recommended to show less than 50 products per page. Any more and it could make your site too slow to load. Once we are done with modifying our theme, click the Save Theme button. You can now go back and view your category and see that the new theme changes have been applied. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to email us at support at cellfire.com.